welcome back guys in my last video on react admin i showed you how to convert the html of the login page into a working react based login form now to power that login form we will need some api integration and today in this video we are going to do that we will install passport and with that we will use the password type authentication okay so i'll quickly open up laravel docs and i'll go to passport right and in that i will search for the password grant okay so there this is the url oauth slash token where i can you know kind of uh, request for a access and refresh token now it requires a client id a client secret um grant types and all those things which ideally the client should not send because you know client secret and client id are something which if they are exposed i am uh, i'll be in a problem so what i'll do is first of all once passport is installed and we have configured it it's still there right we will um create a middleware through which we can send a request with the credentials and the middleware will add these um required Param additional parameters these three parameters okay and we will be able to generate the api token now i don't know whether there is a better way to do this but definitely this is something which i have used in the past and this works okay i'm not going to make a guzzle call but i will rather use the same controller which is responsible for this you know passport url so let's get started all right so passport is installed and now let us look at first of all you know configuring it for the installation and then we will start our code so first things first we'll need to migrate so i'll do that okay it says nothing to migrate i think i have um while i was doing a dry run before the tutorial i have already created those tables so let me see yes i do so that's fine you will once you install you will get few new uh, tables which are one two three four all these four tables you will get rather five tables all with name o auth okay so once we get that the next thing is we need to install passport i think i already have the keys as well okay i don't so what it will do is inside clients it will create two entries okay this is very important this is something which we are going to you know, pick up from the database and send it if you have seen um, you know the grant type has three parameters client id and client secret so this one is the id and this is the secret okay for pass password grant type now the user model needs has api tokens so we will you know, open up our user model and we will add has api tokens once that is added next we need to open up auth service provider if i'm not wrong yes and we will introduce passport routes okay i'll need to import the class okay this is done now by default my auth dot php file like this uses token but now we will use passport this is done and i think we are kind of done with the uh, passport setup so now i'll create a new middleware which will be named api login okay i'm here so what are we going to do we are going to take the secret so db table 
OAuth clients because if you remember I showed you in the clients OAuth clients table we need this entry right so db table OAuth clients where right id will be 2 this is kind of fixed so we can easily do that I'll pluck the secret right and then first so this is the secret which I wanted and then what I will do is request dot rather request merge okay in that I need to suggest the grant type which is password client ID which is two client secret which is dollar secret now why have I done this um, through the query because you know what happens is during development many times I would end up um, you know kind of destroying the entire database and recreating it or even on the production if for some reason let's say you have come you know your key is compromised and you are renewing it right so you may have kept it in environment or something it's better that it is being queried so it's immediately in effect right so yeah that's the reason I have done this um, so once this is done this middleware needs to be added to the kernel so inside our app HTTP middleware rather in the kernel right this is where we will need that so we'll add a new entry api slash login app should be http middleware api login class so this is added as well now we will go to or api.php let's just get rid of these things I don't need this route okay and what I'm gonna do now is create a new route it's going to be a post route route post the URI will be login and this time we are not going to create any new controller as such what we are gonna do is use the access token controller from laravel passport http controllers that's the controller where all the logic is already created okay and if the question is how do i know this i'll show you the function which i am looking at is issue token yes that's correct and let's say the middleware will be there are a couple of middlewares which I want this to go through. So it's an array of keys API slash login and throttle. Right. So how do I know that access, con access token controller is our choice? So let's open my terminal PHP artisan route list okay I'll kind of go a little small on this right so OAuth slash tokens no um, OAuth slash token that's I think the one right because if you see in the documentation right uh, I had searched for grant type right OAuth slash token this is the URL where you know if we send all this information we get the access control and the refresh uh, sorry access token and the refresh token back right so this is the responsible controller so access token controller issue token so what we did was just we used that controller in our api we haven't written anything on our own so with this i think the only thing now that i need to do is confirm that i have some user to work with I have factory of 20 users and then let's just say 
just reach me at amitavroy.com that's my email and now this is the client this is the server so php artisan migrate refresh seed if everything is correct i'll go to the users table just to find i have one user which is this fair enough so our server is running the application needs to send this and get back the token let me see where we are in terms of services so this is our auth service where we have a do login function this function accepts credentials which is um you know an inter uh, no, it's defined using a username and a password okay uh, both a string so we get that and we make an XES call, a post request to this login URL, which in our case is API slash login. If you remember, this is our URL. So slash API slash login is the URL, right? And let's close that. The credentials are being sent as post data and we are getting back the response dot data. So inside index, what I'm gonna do is first of all, import auth service from my services are inside this auth service right now as this is a, in a singleton class so you know i'm always sending the instance which means i can directly call the functions there i don't need to create any instance out of it but before i do that I'll create a constant called post data which has username which is this dot state dot username and password which is this dot state dot password okay we are just trying to get the basic things in place so auth service dot do login post data okay now this will be stored inside a response which needs to be an await which means this function needs to be an async function so what just happened basically whenever we are making an http call or doing something where we get a promise back right so we need to tell javascript that you need to wait you know till this thing is being you know uh, returned Otherwise, what is going to happen is the thread will continue and we will always get a promise which doesn't have any data. So we are saying it's an await. Okay, JavaScript knows that it needs to wait for an you know, auth service dot do user login to return something uh, before moving ahead. And because this we have an await here, we need to define the function as an async function so that JavaScript knows that this function has certain properties for which it needs to await okay so yeah we have this and then the last thing which we are going to do is console.log our response and let's see if we have done everything correctly oops not a new tab but in here if i it says unauthorized which is fine let's see i think the password was wrong is it so if I now hit login, I get back an access token and a refresh token. So what is happening? The login form, the handle submit form, for handle form submit is called. We are sending the uh, username and password through our service, which is making an Axios call to this API, which is here, right? Now it is validating and issuing us an access token and a refresh token if i do some weird kind of password okay which is not correct i'll get a bad request which means it is um you know looking at the correct password and then validating whether you know it should send an access token or not so yeah that's about it that's how we convert this login form into a completely working um, integration 
right the form is now in react and it is communicating with the api in the next video we will look at how we can uh, write the logic where we will get the access token we will store it in a cookie and uh, also we will handle the remember me functionality so without the remember me it will be a session based cookie so the browsers are closed and the session will get destroyed and if we do a remember me the token will let's say um, you know expire after a day and um, you know once a login is done we will redirect the user to the home page so that's what we are going to tackle in the next video as part of creating the react admin application so thanks for watching guys if you like the video do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel